Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory. Again, what a time and season and that we are in, entering a new age and destroying the new age. Hallelujah. There's a new age movement that's being destroyed. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things the Lord was expressing me in the area of being born again, when you are born again in the Spirit, the hand of God is on you. And when the hand of God is on you through the anointing, you no longer serve the flesh, the flesh serves you. Do you understand? So you no longer serve the flesh of corruption. Amen. The flesh now serves you. And he showed me a vision. He said, when my hand is on you, and I saw his hand on an individual, wasn't any specific person. I saw the hand of the Lord on the person, but out of the person came the person. He said, this is the one that's in the spirit because I have my hand holding his flesh. I am anointed him. See, when the hand of God is truly on you and living in the spirit, you're not a servant to the flesh or to the world. The flesh serves you. And there's a connection. He said, you can't be connected in the flesh. You can only be connected in this condition. Other than that, you're disconnected. See, when a person is disconnected, they're still in themselves. When they're connected, they're out of themselves. You are out of yourself. Somebody ran from themselves. So in the process, in the transition, in the conversion, in the regeneration that we go through, there's that place where we always want God's hand on us. See, it's a called the born-again state of being. This is not an area where you're in the flesh anymore. You're in the spirit. And the world no longer is attached to you. In fact, you don't even belong here. You have to put up with things of the world. Amen? But you don't let the world overtake you or influence you. We're no longer lovers of the world. We're lovers of the kingdom and a king. So in this, again, you're constantly walking away from yourself. And now you're in the spirit and you're connected. Where all things are available. Nothing is withheld. Everything's according to his will. Now, it doesn't mean you get every prayer answered. Amen? Sometimes answers of prayer is no. And we get frustrated with that. What do you mean no? He knows better. Amen? Hallelujah. And in this area... It is so important to maintain that born-again state of being. Because these are the warriors. These are the ones that can battle in the spirit. Because you can't battle in the spirit if you're in the flesh. It's impossible. And it is a time of war. And it is a time to battle like you've never battled before. Because we are in a transition but you must be regenerated all the time, and you get regenerated in the Spirit. That's why you worship. That's why you praise. Amen? Man, you know that there's a change when you cooperate with the worship. You don't worship something you don't know. Until you get to really know Him, you may know all about Him. 
You may have played religion for a long time. Well, I know Jesus. Do you worship him? Sure. I worship him every day. What do you do in worship? Well, I worship him because I tithe and I worship. And don't get me wrong, some of those are part of But there's an area where you surrender yourself. You lay yourself on the altar. You walk away from self and you worship the Lord. Amen? Because now you're a sacrifice. You become a sweet-smelling aroma. The Lord loves the cooking of flesh. Especially your own. He knows your smell. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, happy days. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Glory. Second Peter chapter one and verse two. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Second Peter chapter one, verse two. Let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. That means not just reading knowledge, that's knowledge of him. Do you have a knowledge of a friend or knowledge of a person? That's knowing him. Amen. And of Jesus our Lord and his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him or knowing him who called us by the glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Escaped. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, through knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even blindness, hmm. and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What did he say? That you may escape. That's the entrance. Now, there is a physical escape and a spiritual escape. A physical escape is called exodus. A spiritual escape is called rapture. <laughs> Amen. In Genesis chapter 5. I want you to understand something that we are in Exodus 2. We are in Exodus what? 2. It's the second Exodus. Genesis 5. In verse 21. So the physical, ex, uh, the physical escape is an exodus, and the spiritual escape is called the rapture or caught up. Amen? In verse 21, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. So he was 65 years old when he got Methuselah. Snap. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. Hello. And he had sons and daughters. So he walked with God 300 years. I think he had something to say. That's why the book of Enoch is vital. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him up or raptured him. 
alive. Methuselah lived 180 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Can you imagine 969 years? Come on. Wow. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. So he was 182 when he had a kid. And he called his name Noah. This one, and, and, he, and he said, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. Whew. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and he begot Shem, Ham, and Jeff. He was what? 500 years. The guy's 500 years old and he had three kids. Wow. And they weren't about time then, you know what I'm saying? They're like, <laughs> they weren't looking at dying or nothing, you know? Departure. So we see here there's something important about this because you got Enoch that walked with God. He was raptured. He was taken up first one. First rapture. Noah was a part of that generation. Amen? Noah is going to be associated with the first exodus. Go to Genesis 6. Generation genealogy with them. You got... Enoch was the first one raptured. Noah will be the first exodus. We got two escapes. Spiritual and physical. Amen? In verse 1 in chapter 6, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that the daughters were born to them. And the sons of God, known as the angels, saw the daughters of men, and they, and they were beautiful, and they took wise for themselves of all whom they chose. That means these angels had to put on flesh. Hello. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Boy, did things change, didn't they? There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Well, the first giants came from Cain, the serpent's child who was Cain. Amen? And then they had offsprings, and they became giants. And then 200 angels put on flesh, came into the world, put, took women, and produced offsprings. These were called Nephilims. And they, some of them became giants. And it says that these were, those were the mighty men who were of old and men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In other words, they turned out to be pretty nasty. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And what else? And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Here's another one that walked with God. Enoch walked with God and was raptured. Amen? Escape, spiritual one. Noah walked with God, and he escaped. Why? What did God ask him to do? Build an ark. Amen? 
And Noah begot these three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was so was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all the flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence and through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Now, in this we see that here God is preparing an exodus for Noah. Why? Because this is a physical escape. Amen? Does everybody understand this? So you got a spiritual escape and you got a physical escape. So we see that these are the two first escapes. Enoch and Noah. Go to Exodus 12. This was new age. Things were going to change after the flood, don't you think? God destroyed the earth, the flood, and all the powers of darkness that were inhabiting these offspring. Exodus 12. And things were made new. In verse 21. Is everybody there? Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. Now, we know that they were taken in Egypt. They've been in bondage for over 400 years. Egypt is also known as bondage. You've got to remember Egypt was Nephilim. They were all springs of the serpent. And so they took the Israelites... God's people and put them in captivity. Of course, God let them go in captivity because they're rebellion. Amen? People don't go in captivity because you please God. People go in captivity because you disobey God. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Uh, I'm sorry, not verse 2. Verse, <laughs> hallelujah. Verse 22. Now, didn't we just have a Passover? Amen. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but have you noticed the moons? So many nights, it's been red, pinkish. It's been phenomenal. To me, it was more exciting than what they called the blood moon. Amen? To me, this was blood moon. That was phenomenal. He said, and you shall take a, a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is on the ba in the basin, and strike the lentil and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Now you got to remember, Moses had been coming to Pharaoh and saying, let my people go. Why? To go out and worship and serve the Lord. It was time to let them go. Remember, the Lord visited Moses and said, okay, I've heard the cries of my people. Time's up. I'm going to cut them loose. I'm going to let them have an exit from bondage. So he said to him, look at him, this is the 10th plague that's going to come. It was going to be the plague of death. And he said, look at I want you to do something. I want you to put the blood over the lentils of the door. Kill the lamb at twilight. And I will acknowledge the blood. I'll pass by every house that has the blood on it. But the ones that don't have the blood, I will enter in and I will kill the firstborn. I mean, how important how applying the blood of Jesus on yourself, on your vehicle, on your home, when you travel, you speak the blood. Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus on this. Why? Because the Father acknowledges the blood. Amen? Verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lentil and on the doorpost, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house. 
to strike you. Hello. Have you ever heard of all the testimonies about hurricanes and stuff like that and, and people who have applied the blood of Jesus on their homes didn't get touched? Now, somebody can try to apply the blood of Jesus, but you're, if you still have sin, you have accursed items in your home, the blood will not be activated. Verse 24. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their head and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon, and to the firstborn of all livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he and his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night. And he said, rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel. And go, serve the Lord your God who has called you. Also take your flocks, hello, and your, her your herds. And as you have said, be go and go be gone and bless me also and the egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste for they said we shall all be dead so they were trying to get rid of the israelites now because the lord had struck he showed his last plague how many don't know there's a plague globally right now why it's it's a preparation for an exodus so the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of what? Silver. Articles of gold and clothing. So listen, they left in this exodus, from physical exodus from bondage, going into a new age, they had the gold, they had the silver, they had the clothes, got prosperous, provision. I'm telling you, that's what's getting ready to happen, but you got to be in position. Look at right now, there's a plague globally, right? But countries all over the world, not only this country and our president, are releasing financial support to the people. That's a part of the exodus, man. The silver and the gold's coming. It's going to increase, increase, and increase. This is just a transition. Why? Because God is destroying much of the evil and the wicked right now. People have been pushed out of the way. So God can do what he needs to do. There are so many things that are going on. You need to look up if you get a chance about the deep underground military bases that are being destroyed. There's manhole covers that are on fire and stuff like that. Why? Because they're destroying them. They're owned by the satanic worship deep state. There are many places that are being destroyed. Certain militaries, all kinds of things. There is a war going on physically. Amen. But there's also going on spiritually. And verse 36, And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they were granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Wow. Then he, the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth, about 600,000 600, men on foot, besides children, and mixed multitude went up with them. Also in the flocks and herds and great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes, 
of dough which they had brought out of Egypt for it was not leavened because they were driven out of the Egypt and could not wait nor had they prepared provisions for themselves but God was going to prepare now there's something about yeast because yeast interferes with the mind so he wanted to make sure that they were clear in fact when people realize yeast is one of the major foundations that destroys the immune system everybody okay so we see here that the exodus 2 has started amen this was exodus is everybody okay oh hallelujah um, or actually, yeah. Praise God. Uh, this was also associated with the Passover. And Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. Exodus 2 is just for you. We will stay in Exodus 2 all the way to Exodus 3. There are three Exodus and three raptures. And all, it's all under one resurrection period time from Jesus on. And then there will be a second resurrection. But we're not going to get into all that tonight. Deuteronomy 29, is everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Now Moses called all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all of his servants and to all of his land. The great trials which your eyes have seen, the signs and those great wonders. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and, and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness, for your clothes have not worn out on you. Now this was supernatural. So as people grew, so did their clothes. So that their shoes. I mean, think about this. God was providing everything. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you. And your sandals have not worn out on your feet. 40 years. Can you imagine having the same clothes 40 years? Boy, I know some women would be really upset. Guys, they don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Verse 6. You have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or similar drink, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. And when you came to this place, Shan, king of Hezbon, and Og, king of Bashan, came out against us to battle, and we conquered them. These were giants. How did they get through? Through the ham. Amen? Does everybody understand? Ham married an offspring out of Nephilim and produced more children. And we took their land and gave it as an inheritance to Reubenites and Gadites and to half of the tribe of Manasseh. Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. And prosper in what? That all that you do. All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your leaders and your tribes and your elders and your officers, all the men of Israel. Your little ones and your wives, also a stranger who is in the, your camp, from one who cuts your wood to the other who draws your water. That you may enter into the covenant with the Lord your God and to his oath, which the Lord your God makes you with today. That he may establish you today as a people for himself. And that he may be God to you, just as he has spoken to you, just as he has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I make this covenant, this, this oath, 
not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here today with us. For you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt, and that we came through the nations by which you passed by. And you saw their abominations and your idols, which were among them wood and stone and silver and gold, so that there, were, that there may not be among you man or woman or, familiar or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go serve the gods of these nations, that they may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. And so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart and though the drunkard could be included with the sober. The Lord would not spare him for them. Then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy would burn against that man and every curse that is written in this book would settle on him and, the, and, and would blot out his name from under heaven. I don't think anybody's name wants to get blotted out. Amen. So he's talking about this exodus, which is what we're calling the second exodus. And this second exodus is continuing all the way to the third one. We're in it. It's being manifested right now. Things are being released. Plagues. People are freaking out who don't know the Lord. Amen. Amen. I can't tell you how many people are freaked out. It's amazing. I was in Lowe's today. And, and one of the guys that works there says, man, where's your gloves? Where's this? Where's that? I said, bro, I'm protected. I said, the only contamination I carry is God's presence. I said, no weapon formed against me can prosper. I stand on God's word. He was in me as greater than he was in the world. He backed away from me, you know. <laughs> hey, if you're not going to believe God in this, how can you believe him in anything else? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, we are still in Exodus 2. Go to John 11. Hallelujah. Somebody told me today, they said, well, well, there's a pastor that died of this virus. Why did I say, well, it wasn't me? <laughs> and people are calling death according to the virus when it's actually associated with something else. So you can't believe anything they tell you. You know, the fake news and... Nothing but Baal. John 11. Remember, the enemy just wants to bring fear. But God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. John 11, verse 24. Now, uh, I just want to talk here about the resurrection. Because Jesus is the resurrection of life. Amen? And he had a good friend that died. Amen? His name was Lazarus. And he knew his sisters, Mary and Martha. And so they were freaked out. And I mean, when they told Jesus, he still waited a couple days. The dude's been dead, you know? He still waited a couple days. He hung out. And, uh, Verse 24, Martha said to Jesus, said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Of course, he's talking about the final resurrection. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said this, these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and he's calling for you. As soon as she heard that, 
she arose quickly and came to him. And now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose, went up quickly, went out, followed her, saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where, he, and he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, he has loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also keep this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Man, she was more concerned about the smell. I'd say she was in the flesh. <laughs> And Jesus said to her, didn't I say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone and from the place where the dead man was laying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Loose him. And this was what we were talking about, one of some of the first parts of the resurrection. Now the first part of the resurrection continues does everybody understand? There are people still being resurrected today, aren't they? Amen? People raised from the dead. Why? Because Jesus brought the resurrection state of being. He is the resurrection. When he touched this earth, resurrection power hit. Is everybody okay? Matthew 27. This is a, what we call the first resurrection, but the first resurrection goes all the way to the second resurrection. There will be two final resurrections. Matthew 27. Oh, happy days. So there are actually three resurrections, but we're going to talk about two of them. Oh, glory. Matthew 27. Is everybody okay? Verse 45. Now, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard this they said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on the reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were what? Resurrected. And what did they do? Coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. That had to freak many people out, man. But I'll tell you, a lot of people got saved that day. A lot of people. <laughs> and so when the centurion and those who were with him Regarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Now, remember, what this happened was the Passover, right? So, the first Passover was the Exodus. Amen? The second Passover was a resurrection. 
Does everybody get it? Oh, snap. Ephesians 4. Exodus 2 is the name of the title, just in case. Ephesians 4. In verse 1. Are you expecting a lot of things to happen? You should be. You should be in, in, in expecting awesome things about to be released. No matter what the world says, we're not a part of it. If the hand of God is on you, you're walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. In verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. But to each one is great, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captives to the captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But he also first ascend, descended into the lower parts of the earth. Where did he go? Hades. Somebody get it? He went to Hades. He was continuing on the exodus, setting people free from captivity. Escape. Anyone willing to follow him? You want to come out of hell? Come on. Are you willing to follow me? Does everybody get this? He gave them an opportunity to follow him. Some didn't leave. They were convinced that serving Satan was better. In verse 10, it says, He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. That he might what? Fill all things. Again, ascended. First had to descend before he could ascend, releasing those taken captive in Hades and to those willing to follow him. There was another process of escape. Remember, we talked about escape. What kind of escape are there? There's a physical and there's a spiritual. One's exodus, one's rapture. It's all a part of the resurrection. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. And verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away. Went into the house. Is everybody there? Good. <laughs> and the disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the terrors are gathered and burned in the fire, so will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth, the Son in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So the gathering is also associated with escape. Amen? It's escape. Many will escape to righteousness, and unfortunately other ones will be put into bondage. Torment of hell. Ephesians chapter 1. The gathering. 
We are getting closer. But we still got things to do. Hallelujah. Tomorrow will be my 27th year with the Lord. 27 years. Felt like yesterday. I was supposed to have been dead 27 years ago. Actually, I did die 27 years ago. Then I got born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 15. I speak it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And at the eyes of your understanding. See, understanding always is associated with sight. Not physical, spiritual. In the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things known as the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. Eyes of understanding. You know, that's why those that are really not connected are not going to understand what you say. They're going to be in the fear. They're going to really, they're not going to understand. They will not have the eyes of understanding. Why? Because that's sight. That's spiritual sight. They won't understand what's going on right now. You and I ought to be excited at what's happening. Amen? There should be an excitement, of, an, an expectation. Something is about to explode big time. And evil is going to be destroyed in many places. They will be held back for a period of time for the greatest harvest ever. Remember, we are the restrainers of evil. It's the body of Christ that restrains the powers of darkness. If you're in the spirit, if you're in the flesh, well, you ain't rest you're restrained then. Amen? You're either a restrainer or you're restrained. And you're restraining from a restraint. But anyways, don't get restrained. Hallelujah. Joel 2. Did we finish this? Sure we did. Joel 2. Verse 28. Hallelujah. So Jesus was raptured up, wasn't he? After 40 days walking with he rose from the dead. Amen. And he was taken before the disciples. In verse 28, is everybody there? Let's speak it. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on your men... On my serv men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Everyone say, I'm the remnant. Amen. Amen. What did he say? I pour out my spirit. Why? To empower his people to make it 
through the next exodus, to make it through the next rapture. Amen? Oh, glory. It's the final escape while we're in the first resurrection period. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Glory. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, let's speak it together. This is the combination of the third exodus and rapture. They'll go together. In verse 13, but I do not want you to be an idiot. I mean, ignorant. Brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others, we have no hope. See, when people die, they say, well, they're dead. No, brothers and sisters ain't dead. They're more alive than they've ever been. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who are with him right now. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Wow. That's rapture. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up, even though they're raptured, it's considered exodus. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Why? Because they're being transformed now. Their bodies are being transformed. So we see that it's a combination of exodus and rapture, even though they're being raptured totally. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This will be the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets. This will be Exodus 3 and Rapture 3. Revelation 20, and we'll close here. You know, you always have to ask yourself, am I ready to meet the Lord? If you're not, you're in trouble. That means you ain't right with God. Revelation 20, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and the judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until a thousand years was finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison, and he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them together to battle whose number 
is the sand of the sea. They went up on the breath of the earth. Where were they then? In the earth. And surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of the heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So we want to make sure we're part of the first resurrection. Amen. Praise God. Again, we are in a time and season. I just believe that the Spirit wanted you to know where we are right now. To not only bring encouragement, but expectation. You may find cattle all over your apartment. <laughs> Who's going to clean up that mess? <laughs> but anyways, in this whole thing that's happening right now, we want to be ready. We want to be alert. The Bible says be ready in season and out. Be alert, be discerning, be sensitive, be able to see. Stay connected, stay refreshed, amen? Stay worshiped, stay prayed up, stay filled up, and continue to walk away from yourself. Father, we thank you for your word. It's been imparted in each and every one tonight. And we ask, Lord, that the seed that's been there, that it be protected to grow and bear fruit and be brought up again as a reminder by the Holy Spirit so that we can see, so that we can hear, and so that we can follow what you're asking us to do in preparation for what is getting ready to be released, so that we are not moved, but stand firm on your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.